All right, guys, Eric Paul Zinner with 9to5 Sports. Going to begin to the fades, sleepers, values, and the shoulder shrug picks here for the 3M Open. Now, the key thing at this tournament is that it is going to be a lower scoring event. You are really targeting stats in which they're scoring stats. With that, it's just going to be a higher variance type of week, although I have predicted it well the last two years. That's not always you know, a perfect sign that it's going to be easy to predict. It's a lot of soft pricing. You can do a lot with your builds. So, you know, going to have one bold fade here for you guys. And then two kind of obvious ones for you. And we'll start off with the fades. So, honestly, I I don't mind Louie. He's actually the top rated player on the 9-5 to model this week. But coming off of another disappointing finish, you know, he should have won the last two majors. And he just choked. You know, let's just be honest with it. Doesn't have any starts here in the last two years. You know, top eight staff in the field, 88% chance to make the cut. I just feel like he's not going to reward us with a top, you know, 10, top 15 finish. Now, he can easily go on and win. He can easily go out and play well again. I've been hammering home Louis Oosthuizen really this whole season. So it is definitely a bold fade. 10.9 is just a little bit too much for me to pay up for him. Although I would say he's pretty much the ideal play for this type of tournament. I'm just worried about the mental aspect of Louis Oosthuizen as a pick. 10 straight make cuts in a row. That's pretty impressive. I just, I don't know. It just seems like a little bit too risky for me as a play at that price point. Then we're going to get into Dylan Fratelli. I feel like some people are going to be tempted to play Dylan Fratelli this week, and I'm not going to say that it's wrong because he had an 18th place finish and a 46th place finish here in the last two years, and he's coming off of that great finish at the Open Championship. But prior to that, guys, he struggled at events that he should not have struggled at. So to me, I'm just a little bit worried about him as a pick. Not the best staff at not ranking out well in the model, has a 50% chance to make the cut, likelihood to make the cut, and he's 8.3. We know why he's 8.3. That's because of his good finish last week. It's definitely too much to pay up for him for me this week. It's as simple as that. Um, and then just looking at Gary Wilden, he's going to get right eventually. We've just been so hit or miss, especially over the last really six months or so. Um, I'm a little bit worried about him as a pick in his made cuts. Average finish of 34th, but he has a 50% chance likelihood to make the cut as well. And he's 8K, no course history, um, you know, 66, stat rank play in the field, 58th in the model. It's just a little bit too much for me to pay up for those guys, especially when there's better quality picks in those same price point ranges. And that's why I normally can't end up on players, and that's why they become fades for me. So now we're going to get into a couple of the sleeper picks here. A uh, familiar name, I'm typing in sleeper, a uh, familiar name is going to be popping up, um, Troy Merritt. Now, he really kind of choked it away, and so will this other um, sleeper that I talked about last week. They kind of choked it away. So course history-wise, it's right on par with Troy Merritt, the Troy Merritt experience. Miscut, and then a top 10 finish. That's really been his MO this whole season. Um, you know, look at it. Three straight top, or three top 10 finishes, one miscut. That's just how he rolls. It's just he's so hit or miss, and you can tell pretty early on if he's going to be, you know, playing well or not. Really should have had that Rock and Mortgage Championship win. Uh, I was worried about him mentally uh, at the John Deere Classic. Uh, that was kind of the worry there with him. But you know, two weeks from that now, I think he's going to be able to bounce back well. Um, you know, he is from, or he went to school in Winona State University for two years or like a year and a half, which is in Minnesota. So he does have some ties there as well before he transferred to Boise State. So I do like, I think it was Boise State. I do like Troy Merritt as a sleeper pick at 7.5. Just, you know, he's so hit or miss. You could easily get a top 10 finish here. Um, so for me, that's worth it in about 10% of GPP builds. And then Chris Kirk. Chris Kirk really struggled down the stretch of the Open Championship last week. Could have easily made the cut, but he's kind of in the same thing. 61% chance to make the cut, though. That's pretty good. Top 24 staff in the field. Top 40 in the model, 7.9. You know, that's an okay price point. Uh, 44 place finish here last year. But he's a guy where if we just think about the quality of player that he is and the type of player he is, I would think that he would do well in this type of event. Overall, needs to score on the par fives. But after that, playing pretty well. He's a guy that I could easily see go out and get a top 20 finish this week. Then my last sleeper pick is going to be a familiar one for you guys. Um, Mito Pereira. And I can't really say that. We're going to have to pull him up there on the cheat sheet page because he doesn't have a photo yet. We don't have we don't have a photo for him. So we're going to pull him up here on the, on the 9 to 5 page here on the cheat sheet. So 
That's how easy it is. That that tool is so nice. Uh, but looking at comp course history, H3 and H4 there. Um, fifth and 34th place finish. So he's made two straight cuts in a row. Those were the last two starts. Did miss the cut, the Rocket Mortgage Classic. But he's a Corn Ferry Tour guy that really was dominating. Had two wins in a row. Was playing well there. I think the biggest difference is that you know, this is going to be a similar type of event to those Corn Ferry Tour events. So I actually don't mind him. I could easily see him going on playing really well. Uh, top 16 play in the 9 to 5 model this week. So I don't mind him as a pick. And then we're going to get into some more sleeper or shoulder short picks here now. Uh, so we're going to pull up Brent Snedeker here, guys. Uh, Sneds, he's okay. Once again, doesn't have that course history that we're looking for. But overall, we can see kind of why I like him. So top 30 in par 5 scoring. And he does do really well in that 125 and in yardage range. Uh, he's made two straight cuts in a row, including the cut at the Open Championship last week. Actually, ranks top 12 in the model. That's kind of weird, but, you know, recent form has been good enough. Uh, we can see that, you know, he's made some cuts there. The worry about him as a pick is that you're pretty much just playing him in hopes that you're going you're gonna to get a made cut out of him. Really don't see that much upside with him as a pick, and that's why I really can't go out of my way to play him. And then Steve Stricker, talking about, you know, maybe midwest narrative steve stricker i don't mind as a pick uh we just look at the type of player that should do well that's gonna be him you know he made the cut of the john Deere classic made the cut of the pga championship i expect him to make the cut this week three straight make cuts in a row on the pga tour as simple as that for me with steve stricker and then we're going to get into uh one other player i'm actually going to consider him more of a sleeper pick it's gonna be doug game but i might i'm i was close to making him a core play as well Top six staff at top six in the model, three straight make cuts in a row, and a top 20 finish here last year. Can we make him a core play? I don't know. By the end of the week, he probably will be a core play. Most likely going to be a high exposure play for me. 66% chance to make the cut at 7.9. It's definitely great. Recent form has been very solid for Doug M. I think that's a great price point for him. And then just kind of going over one of the value picks again. Um, it's going to be Kevin Tway. Kevin Tway, I don't mind. 50% chance to make the cut. Um, if we factor in the Barbasol championship, which going over it again, once we get the data in here for the Barbasol that will be popping up on this chart, 26, 23rd and a 14th place finish. So three straight T26 or better finishes there for Kevin Tway, ranks top 32 in the model, which at 6.6 K will take that right around a 50% chance to make the cut. I don't mind that. I'm okay with it there for Kevin Tway this week. But that's really all the value picks I could find. I don't think we have to go that way. I think we just load up on players in that low tier price run range and you know try to find the stud that we like the most. But that is all I have for you guys this week for the 3M Open. I hope you guys enjoyed the coverage. If you have not, make sure to check out the picks and previews video. That's where we get much more in depth with you know why we're getting into stuff, getting into the key stats and what are the key stats. Um, you know, we do the deep dive prior to the video, so we get that all to you. And then the core plays. We do that for you guys as well. Been pretty solid this whole year. But that's all I have for you guys. If you guys enjoyed it, give me a like and subscribe. If you guys want to join 9 to 5 Nation, $10 a month, best value in PGA DFS. That's all I got. Good luck this week, and as always, let's keep cashing.